who's living in whose head rent free. That's what we're going to talk about in that drama right now. So before we get started, if you can do me a favor, click that like and subscribe button, become part of the team and family, and thank you. If you've been living under a blanket for the last couple weeks, Ben Milliken and Randy Blockett have been at it nonstop. Randy is a big influencer and Ben is an even bigger influencer. Both have great YouTube channels, but they don't see eye to eye on forward-facing sonar. Now let me preface before we get into it. I respect both of them very much. I don't watch a lot of Randy's stuff. That's the truth. I don't want, I I do watch more Ben stuff than I do Randy. Randy puts out two or three videos a day, mostly are clickbait oriented, but that's not saying Ben doesn't clickbait us all the time too. Randy is just really good at it. But when you do a video on why Taylor Swift and Travis Kelsey have an effect on bass fishing, I probably won't ever watch your channel. I just think it's stupid and ridiculous. Having said that, Ben has done it to me many times. The best lure you could ever use, and it's a Kamushi or whatever it is, and then you go on and watch the video, and there's nothing being said at all about that bait. They both have to do that. Randy is more honest with his subscribers, saying, I have to do it or else I don't get the views. It's the problem with YouTube. There's so much competition that you have to say and do things to get people to watch their video, just like this one. I spent, no joke, 30 minutes making this thumbnail because I thought it was funny. And I've watched the two of them go at it back and forth a lot lately. But is Randy jealous of the success Ben has? I don't know. I think that Randy makes videos to continue to make money, which is perfectly fine on this platform. It's YouTube is really tough, to be honest. What Randy's done in the last couple of years has been phenomenal. What Ben has done is even better. Ben is probably one of the kings of the internet for bass fishing content. He is well recognized, well respected, and what he did last year to make the leaps is pretty awesome. It's actually really awesome. I tried to interview him while he was down here at the Harris chain on the last day, but I had to leave to go take care of my little boy because he was in a swim competition and Ben got in late. And quite honestly, when I did get up to his boat to try to do an interview with him, he was with his family and I thought it was more important that he spend time with his family than talk to someone like me who has, is a nobody on the internet and on YouTube. But I think there is some jealousy on Randy's part for what Ben has done, what Ben has accomplished over the years, and then also how Ben has just completely had a dominating system, a dominating year on the elites. Maybe not the top of the best of the best, but going out there and winning a tournament and then being consistent or fairly consistent throughout the rest of the open season to make an elite card or elite entry is really amazing. There are a lot of other anglers that just that don't do it. There's anglers like uh, that were there were anglers like Ish Monroe and uh, Bobby Lane and a bunch of other successful, highly recognized anglers that were competing against Ben that didn't make it. So I do think there's a little bit of jealousy on Randy's part. Part, but mostly what's going on is all about forward-facing sonar. Now everyone has an opinion on forward-facing sonar. You either dislike it or you like it. Truth be told, I think that Ben should be getting a lot of money from everybody in the forward-facing sonar because he has pushed and shown a lot of statistics and other things that, you want to know what, he's making videos on forward-facing sonar, they should be paying him for it because he is the biggest supporter of forward-facing sonar, where Randy is not. Randy has a lot of followers and subscribers that don't like forward-facing sonar. And to be honest, I did one or two videos on forward-facing sonar, I think one, and a majority of the people didn't like it. Don't, they think it's cheating, they think it's unfair and there is some setbacks or some major things that happen when using forward-facing sonar. My good buddy Cousin Ken or Ken Duke as everyone else knows him, I call him Cousin Ken because he is family to me, did a, a video recently with Ben and Randy and Ben came on and had statistics about how forward-facing sonar wasn't didn't help you catch fish but it, it that it wasn't hurting people catching bass. It wasn't helping, it wasn't hurting, but it really is. That technology is something that everybody is trying to learn right now. Does it give you an advantage? Yes. If you are able to have forward-facing sonar and the other boat doesn't, you're going to beat them. Now, it doesn't mean that you're going to catch more fish than that other person, but you're going to find the fish, you're going to see what they're reacting to, and you're going to know what's going on a lot more than those anglers that don't use it. Years ago, John Cox, 
and this is just some background stuff, John Cox was probably 16, 17, 18, 19 months as the number one angler in the world, and he did not use it. So over the last few years, John Cox has not been to that dominating status that he once was because the anglers that are using forward-facing sonar are doing better. Even in the video that, that uh, Ben did just a couple days ago, it showed that more fish are being caught in the last couple of years. I know that's weird to say, and, and it doesn't mean that forward-facing sonar is hurting bass, but it does help an angler, and it's, it's a technology and something that all pros need to have, and they need to be proficient at it too, because when you get in certain areas of the country, that forward-facing sonar does help. Now, when you're down south here in Florida, I don't think it works as well. Having said that, years and years ago, and I say rest in peace to my good buddy Aaron Martins, he used it on on Toho and I was shocked in the places that he found while following him and having a drone up and stuff. He was using forward-facing sonar down here in what we call a bathtub. It's not very deep. I don't think it has a big beneficial help to help to catching fish down here, but he did use it and was very successful down here on Toho. So while Florida is a little bit different than the rest of the country, as you start moving your way up and getting into that St. Lawrence and those Michigan places, forward-facing sonar is very important. And if you watch a majority of bass and the BP if you really get into it, a lot of the anglers are just doing this. All they're doing is looking down at their forward-facing sonar. But who's living in whose head? That's what this video is supposed to be about. Well, the whole Randy, Ben started, drama started several years ago. I believe it was started by Ben, and Randy kind of kept his head out of it. I will say Ben is more aggressive about the approach against Randy. I don't know why, because it's just... It's just adding to the drama. I kind of feel like maybe they're even in cahoots with it at times, but Ben is very aggressive and calls us idiots and calls, puts on a face mask and puts on stuff on his, on his chest, on his shirt. And it's kind of a little childish because I do believe Ben is a better person than that. Now, Randy, I think does those videos just for views. That's the truth. Um, there's never any real substance to what he says about forward-facing sonar because what he's viewing or what his take is uh, is what other subscribers and his fans feel about forward-facing sonar, where Ben is statistically proving some things. I don't know if the video really goes into it enough. Ben's last video was more of an LGBYQ rainbow colored spreadsheet that kind of got confusing and still could have been taken one way or the other because where they go fishing has an influence on how many fish they catch, when, what time of the year they go has an influence on what they catch. And I just felt like it was a numbers overload that even I was confused by. And, and, and I actually have the spreadsheets on my computer too because Cousin Ken sent them to me. And I don't know if they really reiterated what, Ken, uh, what Ben was trying to do. But having said that, who's living in whose head? I do believe as much as I I think that Ben is the better content creator and I think Ben is someone I'd like to meet and fish with and I'd like to interview. I do think Randy is living in Ben's head. That's really confusing. I'll say that again. I do think that Randy's living in Ben's head and I don't know why because I think Ben is better than that and I think that he has better content and that he has better videos and he has better quality of his video and you learn more from Ben. I do think that Ben is the better content creator. I know that might be controversial and some people aren't going to agree with it but I'm looking at it as what how you can become a better angler. And I think that there's topics that Randy just uses to get your views. It's unbelievably competitive on YouTube. That's the truth. So you have to do something to stand out and make yourself different than the other people. And if you have the one of the bigger guys that's telling you Ford Fixes and Sonar is the be all end all, why not take that other stance and just go, I think that he's lying and he's full of shit and my subscribers do it. Randy doesn't have any statistics to prove what he's saying. That's the problem. So I do think Randy's living in Ben Ben's head a little bit more than Ben is living in Randy's head. But this drama is going to continue and I can't wait to see where it goes. I can't see, wait to see who's saying what about each other. You want to know we should just have a fish off. Ben versus Randy. Randy, one on one, mano y mano. Randy, drive down to Texas. Let's see it. Put up or shut up, both of you guys. Both of you guys would beat me, so that's all right. I have no problem admitting that. But let's do it. 
I mean, Ben getting to the leads is a big thing. Is Ben a bigger name in the industry? Probably. Ben is pushing six cents baits better than anyone. I think the only time that I would say someone has done a better job at marketing one brand would be the Guggen guys and the Guggen kids killed it. But Ben is at that level. Ben is selling baits and Randy's selling baits too. I hear that Rand, uh, Randy is selling lots of my, uh, mega bass baits and congratulations to that. But I wanna know which one you think is living in which one's head. So comment below and tell me what you think. Remember, take a kid fishing, get your fish on. I will talk to you soon. Cheers.